As the seven Democratic candidates take the stage tonight, we ask who has the most to lose? We are back with Democratic strategist Michael Starr Hopkins and Politico White House reporter Gabby Orr. All right, so tonight, mm -hmm. seven people on the stage. We're down to Biden, Bernie, Warren, Pete, Yang, <laughs> Klobuchar, Steyer, look at that. That's like embarrassing. Wow. I can do this all off the top Amazing. of my head. <laughs> and we are getting down to it, right? It is the end of December. We may or may not have an impeachment trial in the Senate in January, and mm -hmm. Iowa is in early February. So all this time we've been saying it's so far off, mm -hmm. it's so far off, it's so far off. Right it there. is not far off anymore. Mm -hmm. So, Gabby, from your perspective, of these seven who are going to be on the stage tonight, you know, who comes in with a sort of make or break moment? Who needs to have something happen tonight or they're basically done? Oh, it's so tough. Um, <laughs> I, I, I'm going to choose two candidates. Number one, Elizabeth Warren. I yes. think she, she has been in this weird spot for the last few months where she was dominating the field at the beginning of the summer and then these healthcare attacks on her just really did a lot of damage and I haven't seen her recover yet um, and she no longer feels like the candidate that inspires the progressive base mm. I think Bernie has moved firmly into that role yeah so she needs to have a standout performance tonight otherwise I do think that her her ultimate performance in New Hampshire and Iowa are in jeopardy um, secondly Andrew Yang I know people are yeah. Yeah. fans yeah. of the show are big <laughs> fans of him but um, he, he barely made the cutoff for this debate and he's running a really interesting campaign, but I think he also needs to prove in some way that he has experienced that he can perform well in these early primary states. Um, otherwise, it's hard to see him making the next debate in January um, and, and then gaining any sort of momentum. I would agree with you. I've said it here, which is that, look, I mean, you, you like you said, he barely made it, but he still made it. And this is the time to step up, which is you shouldn't be sitting there waiting to get called. You got to be aggressive. You got to force the conversation on your terms when you're an anti-establishment candidate, that is how it works. Mm -hmm. They're never going to take you seriously no. and you make, unless you make them take them seriously. You have to force them to. Um, you know who the person who's real uh, most to lose is Amy Klobuchar. That's what right? I, well, I mean, do. Amy is, yeah. this is it for her, right? I mean, like, I, she may not qualify for that next one. And, I mean, she's really at the mercy, in my view, of speaking time yeah. from the moderators. But every single time, she gets so much speaking time in these things, Michael. Mm -hmm. It doesn't move the needle. She never. She's got to get away from goals. these prepared lines that the yeah. campaign oh, is giving her. God, yeah. When and, I was a little girl. And, yeah, it, oh. it, it doesn't come off well. It yeah. comes off really over You didn't like that joke really about her ex-boyfriend. Ex oh, my gosh. I mean, like, like oh. Those yeah. people, <laughs> they need to be in response to something, in response right. to somebody mm -hmm. saying something else. Then it looks authentic and organic. These prepared lines, it honestly comes off more negative because people are turned off by it. But you know, I agree. that's not something that you can like coach. You're either, either capable you know how to do of it doing it or you're mm -hmm. not. I but mean, that's the, that's a I, hard thing. I think there's a way to do it with candidates where you've peppered them with so many questions so mm -hmm. often that they are they have the it ability to comes across as organic, but really they're prepared. Yeah. I mean, the one thing I'll say that Amy does have going in her favor mm -hmm. is there is no candidate that the pundits want to have a moment more than Amy Klobuchar. Yeah. I mean, the right. number of like Amy surging at the right time <laughs> take that I've right. read given her polling position is just kind of hilarious like she checks off a lot of she, boxes. she, she box. does yeah, she, she does. checks off all of the like pun and boxes mm -hmm. so look I would not be surprised at all if regardless of how we think she does on the stage tonight there are any number of people who say oh it's Amy's moment She's surging at the right time. This time it's for real. Mm -hmm. And look, I do think that because of that media-generated energy, she has had a little uptick in the early states. She's been very aggressive in Iowa. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if we see a little Amy boomlet coming for January. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I think that everyone on the stage except for the top two, it's kind of a do or die moment for them. Mm. Because at the, as we get to the end of the year, right. there's gonna be framing of what 2019 looked like and what 2020 is gonna look like moving ahead. And if Biden and Sanders have decent nights, then I think that that gap starts to get bigger and bigger. And then, you know, Pete has a good ground game in Iowa, so he'll do well in Iowa. Yeah. But I think we'll end up with four states potentially four different winners, and this just being a mess. I think you're right, Michael, Maybe. which is over and over again we've seen in the polling. It's winnowing to Bernie and Biden, which makes sense. I mean, the two ideological poles of the party mm -hmm. and the titans from the many years who have defended both of those. And ultimately, I mean, that's what the contest was 
always about. I mean, I guess the question is, Gabby, is do you think that it will winnow before Iowa? Like, is this so much a make or break that some of these people are going to begin to drop out? Because, like, if you're an Amy Klobuchar, I mean, the money's going to run dry mm -hmm. at some point. She's only like 3% in the Super Tuesday states. What do you think? Um, no, I don't, yeah. actually. I think huh. that Michael's certainly on to something when he says that we could have four states with four different yeah, winners. Um, I, I, undoubtedly, I think that's a, a likely possibility. And there are also a number of polls that have shown that Democratic voters are still so undecided. Yes. I mean, they are looking at a number of different candidates. It is not as though 70 percent of the Democratic primary electorate right now has chosen their candidates and plans to vote for them in each state. So that leaves a lot uh, on the table, yeah. a lot of, of a lot of possible scenarios that could unfold between now and Iowa. I mean, it really varies candidate to candidate. Mm -hmm. So Bernie's people and Biden's people are pretty set. Right. Yeah. You know, comparatively, it's usually Bernie's people are the most set and then Biden behind. But yeah, Warren, Buttigieg, everybody else's supporters are like completely up for grabs, which means either they consolidate behind those candidates and you have that messy situation, mm -hmm. or they drift away to one of the top two contenders who increasingly appears to have the momentum. I think it could go in either direction at yeah, this point. Yeah, and we covered this on the show yesterday. 29% of Warren's, this was an Emerson poll that we covered yesterday, margin of error 4%, but still 29% of Warren supporters said that they were firmly with her. Only 28% of Buttigieg supporters said that. You compare that with, the, I think it was 50-something mm -hmm. percent for Joe Biden, 71% for Bernie Sanders. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So we're and talking we're 7 dead. out of 10 right. of these people's supporters are up for grabs. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and I think it's really difficult to figure out where a Buttigieg supporter goes if they no longer feel like they can support yeah, him or where a Warren true. supporter goes. I mean, you would think naturally they would gravitate toward Bernie Sanders, but there are a number of people who I've met on the campaign trail just anecdotally who say, well, I'm somewhere between voting for Joe Biden or voting for Elizabeth Warren. Yeah. Um, and so, <laughs> it, so that just contributes. Yeah, to No, you're right. right. I mean, the that's what I love choice, about second choice. Yeah, the second choice for, we have it here for front, Biden actually. right now. Yeah. yeah, the second choice for Biden supporters is Sanders and then Warren. Yeah. The second choice for Sanders supporters Supporters solidly is Warren and then Biden. Warren is Sanders, then Biden. So they all have each mm -hmm. other as their top picks. And then for Buttigieg, um, their second choice is Elizabeth Warren. By the way, he's the only one that had Bloomberg pretty high up there in the second choice yeah. ranking. As many of his supporters were looking at Bloomberg second as we're looking at Sanders second, which is why Bloomberg's been eating into his margin. Yeah, which is also, I think, what shows that this is less of an ideological primary and mm -hmm. going to be less of an ideological race for Democrats and more about who can win. Democrats literally just want to win this election. 2024, we can talk about kind of where the party's going to go. But right now, I think the essence of this race for Democrats is who can beat Trump. I think it's awesome. ideology plus electability. But I mean, That's if you're a Biden supporter say. and you're yeah. saying you would go to Sanders or Warren, I mean, those are two. So the reason why different. is they ideologically would agree with them, but they're saying, I don't know if people are ready for that. And that's yeah. why I keep saying that the only way to take Joe Biden out is if you can crack the veneer of electability. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that is where, like mm -hmm. I said in the earlier panel, which is that you got to focus on these issues that actually matter matter to Trump voters. I mean, in Michigan and Pennsylvania and Ohio, about manufacturing and trade and immigration, and yet, what are the things that we get zero talking about? But right. the biggest questions around Sanders yeah. and Warren both yeah. are, are they electable? Yeah, and they should all be pressed on that, yeah. right? This is this is the case. I think yeah. we also, it's easy to underestimate how much just personal affinity, just yeah. like, I like this guy. Yeah. You know, yeah. the two, I mean, the two top contenders in right. terms of favorability are Sanders and then Biden, and it's no accident that that translates into they're the two top contenders in the primary. People yeah. just like them. They feel and comfortable they with feel them. Trust. They trust them. Yeah. They feel like they're telling them the truth. I mean, I even, look, Biden is not my guy, but I even feel like he's honest with me about his bad ideas, mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> There's something compelling about that. Right. Yeah, yeah, there really is. All right. Uh, thanks, well, we'll guys. see how it Appreciate goes it. tonight. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Tomorrow on Rising, we're going to have all the latest takes and analysis from tonight's Democratic debate. Hill TV's Jamal Simmons is going to share some of his conversations from the spin room. And Trump campaign's director of communications, Tim Murtaugh, we always have the other side to respond. Indeed. Tonight, though, do not miss it. We're going to be live on YouTube and on Facebook with our coverage of tonight's debate. you got to watch our pre-show that starts at 7.30 p.m. and also our post-game analysis right after the debate ends. We've got great friends of the show on to include... Ryan Grimm, Zed Jelani, Brianna Joy Gray, and Jennifer Holdsworth. You do not want to miss it. We always have a blast doing these That's things. Right. And I think I've broken some news on them as well. Yeah, we so have. You've got to so, make sure yeah. you tune in. Hit subscribe so you don't miss the notification. Have a great day. We'll see you back here later. See you later.